Hello, my friends. Jacob's here once again, and so are all of you, and a lot of new people, too. So overwhelmed, so happy. Finally, after months of being stuck in the mud, it seems like the Lord has blessed me with an appearance on Marfugal TV last night. You got to check out the show. But a lot of you are here because of that show, so welcome. Here's the deal. I'm Jacob Israel, right? This is a ladder. It's not anything crazy. All of this stuff, they're just knickknacks I think are cool. I like to get all that stuff out of the way because I talk about very important things. Things that are going on in the world right now. Huge things. And then I extrapolate a very spiritual meaning. Something people would say is prophetic, if you will. Prophecy. The spirit of Christ being revealed in the world. This is a big deal. The Georgia Guidestones being blown up. It's a big deal. horn, otherwise known as a trump of God, uh, given to me by my buddy Daniel Ellis, and it is supposed to sound, it's the trump, the trump of God, it's supposed to sound the day, it's a big deal. You know, I called up Lance, Lance a lot nice, little theologian guy that I like to talk to, nice guy, call him up, I wanted to tell him about all the amazing things I have to share today. Uh, before I even get into the Georgia Guidestones, I got to get this out of the way because this is a big deal. I said to him, I said, look, if I said, you know, the Last Supper, you probably think of what? You know, the end, right? And if I said, hey, the trump of God, what would you think of? And then if I said trumpet, what would you think of? All of these things are very symbolic and they're, uh, they're messages for us. They're very symbolic, and actually they're pretty literal, too. Like in the day when uh, Christ has come to judge the living and the dead, right? To separate the goats from the sheep. To kind of reward those who have lived a good life and to condemn those and correct those that have lived a pretty poor life. The trump of God sounds. Now, I know we got Donald Trump, right? Truth Social and everything else. So you got the Trump there. But let me tell you, there's a lot of trumpets in the news. I just recently covered Trumpet the Bloodhound. In the news, won the Westminster Dog Show. But did you know at the same time, there was a horse race that they're calling the Balaam Incident, where there was a horse that was winning, and at the last minute, even though it was crushing the competition, at the last minute, Moro Flyboy, that's the name of the horse, which was beating everyone out, the horse decided to veer off into the railing, knocking the rider off of the horse, and then making way for the victory of guess what horse? The Heavenly Trump. Take a look. Lead horse at the Lone Star Park Bucks Jockey. Act of God gives victory to Heavenly Trump. That's the news. That's the news. Flyboy was led by apprentice jockey Simon Camacho Benitez. He approached that final stretch and he was wrecking everybody. And all of a sudden the horse just decides, that's it. I don't want to race anymore. Moral 
fly boy made contact with the rail, but Camacho Benitez yards from the finish line. Yards! Very close, which gave way for Heavenly Trump to step up and uh, win the race. Heavenly Trump, Trump at the Bloodhound, the Trump of God, all very coincidental. News media outlets were saying the indisputable, indisputable, Balaam-inspired act of God propelled Heavenly Trump to victory. Interesting, right? The jockey's name, by the way, Simon, you know, you think of Simon, who picks up the cross after Christ? Simon. Simon means to hear. Those that hear the word of God, the truth of God, they're the ones that pick up the cross. You're supposed to pick up your cross. You're supposed to leave from death to life. You're supposed to walk in a newness of life. You're supposed to be born again into the spirit. If you're new, welcome. It's not as hard as you think, but today's news and the things that are going down, especially with, you know, the climate, <laughs> it's, uh, it's very significant. So I'm glad you're here. So the name of the jockey, I think to myself, because I like, I think, you know, God gives everybody a name for a reason. You know, we have names for a reason. We have experiences for a reason. Everything works together for the good of those that love the Lord. So I think let's look up the name. Simon, I knew, meant hearing. So uh, I decided to look up the rest of the name, Camacho and Benitez. Camacho means twisted, disfigured. Benitez means son of those that are blessed. So really, the jockey, the rider of that horse, Moro Flyboy. Now here's where it gets weird. Moro Flyboy, the Balaam horse. Moro is the fight or flight reflex. It's ruled by your reptilian brain and Flyboy means pilot. You put them together and it's actually the reptilian's brain's pilot or Satan's pilot could be a way to look at it spiritually. So literally, it would be the Antichrist, in a roundabout way, about to win the race, but being thrown at the last minute so that the heavenly Trump could win at the Lone Star Park. The rider of that was the one who hears the twisted son of the blessed. It's neither here nor there, except for the fact that you have all of these things coming together. So as I'm getting ready for this show, which I think is incredibly significant, profound and important, and kind of like a warning sign, if you will, it's kind of like a wake up call. It's like, how many more of these shows do I need to do where there's stuff in the world and it's like, you know, you better be, you better be good. You gotta get it together because that's it, all right? The trumpet sounded just like I sounded it on the show. It sounded and we're, we don't got a lot of time. We don't got a lot of time. And by that, I don't mean like, oh, uh, you got to worry about this, that, and the other thing. I'm saying huge change is coming. Huge change. And you're going to want to have faith. You're going to want to be in God's favor. Because the day that's coming, especially when we take a look at this parable of the ten uh, virgins, which I have a whole show on, by the way. If you, if you don't know anything about it, check it out. I wanted to share it at the end of the show, but I didn't have a copy of it. So what I'll do is I'll put it, you know, you can click on the box and watch it because there is a great breakdown of it. But I'm going to give you kind of a preliminary breakdown of, of uh, the parable of the ten virgins and what it literally means and really means because it's uh, significant, especially when you find out what just went down in England. But before we get into that, we got to talk about the Guidestones. Now here's weird. I just talked about the Guidestones and their Ten Commandments, right? <laughs> On my last show. So I find it interesting that today, out of the blue, right, they, they, uh, they got blown up. They got destroyed. Now, why did they get destroyed? Did they get destroyed? Is this an act of God saying, look, I'm crushing the system? I hope so. Or is it one of those things that it's like, well, we've already accomplished what we needed to accomplish. 
and uh, you know, we've accomplished our goal. I don't know. That's gonna be up to you to decide. things reminds me a lot of their totem pole you know the ten, their ten commandments maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with me very strange. Stranger still is their value, past, present, and we're in this together. But this is significant. If you don't know what the Georgia Guidestones are, they're, they're totally sus, okay? They're totally sus. They, they were erected in like 1980. There's a story around it. They're, it's called the American Stonehenge. This is what it looks like. On a summer day in 1979, a man using the alias R.C. Christian, which people think is Roman Catholic Christian, but no one really knows, shows up to the Elberton Granite Finishing Company, presents them a very detailed, specific plan, and tells them they want to build these Georgia Guidestones, which are now on display. Which, by the way, Yoko Ono said is a beautiful thing. Maintain humanity under 500 million. That's like their number one commandment. There's like 8 billion people on the planet now. So, this is a good thing. Now, to many, this monument is not a good thing, not a godly thing. Some believe that it's the beast system, the antichrist system. It is the powers that be that are opposed to the things of God. That's why when news started circulating that perhaps this wasn't an explosion, but could it have been an act of God? Was it lightning? And when you look at the tape, if you look at the upper left-hand corner, you can see the street light getting brighter. That's what happens when lightning strikes and there's no fire or real smoke to be seen. Could it be that lightning indeed struck down these guide stones? Was there a spike in voltage which turned into a power surge? An act of God. The fact that it gets blown up, so significant so important so wonderful you know known as it's known as america stonehenge the georgia guidestones in elbert county they were unveiled in 1980 and uh it was to engrave these stones with maxims laws to an age of reason so there's this age of reason which is coming up or the age of enlightenment which is coming up and so these guidestones were there to guide people to this age. Now, the reason it could have been blown up, I would like to think that it's the Lord saying, we don't like your plan. I would like to think that it's the Lord saying, I don't like your plan, especially if it's, uh, you know, gonna to call the population. But an argument could be made that since it was the guide stones up to the age of reason that perhaps we're in that great reset the age of enlightenment which by the way happens you know the age of uh, of reason and age of enlightenment comes right after the renaissance beyonce's got her renaissance album coming out right and there is a reset going on renaissance i think means rebirth it's very strange because you know that there's a reset going on they even call it the great reset These granite stones, these pillars, these uh, American Stonehenge, they were quarried, they had to be, that was part of the deal, out of this like pyramid quarry. 
Isn't that funny? Pyramid, right? All about the all-seeing eye. And their Ten Commandments were, well, they were translated into eight different languages. English, Spanish, Swahili, Hindi, Hebrew, Arabic, Chinese, and Russian. It's the most spoken, widely spoken. So they wanted everybody to be able to read it. And what does it say? Well, let me just read them to you, okay? Maintain humanity under 500 million, in perpetual balance with nature, guide reproduction wisely, improving fitness and diversity, unite humanity under a living new language, rule passion, faith, tradition, and all things with tempered reason. In other words, they're going to tell you what to believe, they're going to tell you how to think, they're going to tell you how to make babies. Just to put it in perspective, protect people and nations with fair laws and just courts. Let all nations rule internally, resolving external disputes in a world court. Basically what's going on already. Is that already the deal? Is there already a new world order? They seem to be saying that a lot. Russia, China said the new world order. Everybody's saying the new world order. Everybody's like there's a new world order. Everybody. Prize beauty, truth, love, seeking harmony with the infinite, be not a cancer on the earth, leave room for nature. And they say this again, leave room for nature. Okay. So, blown up today. Blown up. Kaboom. Now, all of this stuff that's coming out, all of this stuff is incredibly exciting. I think it's incredibly exciting because God reveals what's happening in the spirit by what's happening in the natural. We're seeing a lot of corruption revealed. We're seeing a lot of plans that people made, right? Disbanded. There's, we're seeing it, even though they're trying so hard. And I've been warning people for years. I said, it's going to get tough. It's going to get like a python. It's going to start to slowly strangle you. But hang on, because God's got this. It's going to look like those that listen to the twisted son of those that are blessed, the twisted one, the deformed one, you know, the bastard or the antichrist, if you will, if you look at it spiritually speaking, looks like it's going to win by a long shot. But then at the last minute, God's going to intervene. Just like God intervened in the Super Bowl. I'm not saying God did, but I believe God did. Because I did a show about the Super Bowl. If you haven't seen it, you should check it out. Where I basically predicted it. I said Rams by three. You know, I thought it was going to be either seven or three. But I thought three was more significant because it has to do with resurrection. And I said it was going to be at the last minute. And it would probably be on somebody cheating. Very strange, right? But the symbolism was there. The Rams horn. The Rams won by three. It's very significant very symbolic and a reason for us all to ask for the truth no matter what the cost you know to seek god especially today especially since in england you got these protesters who i i briefly talked about this on um on adam's show but this was very this is a big deal okay uh, with some glue and some spray paint, protesters took action at London's Royal Academy of Arts to demand greater government action on climate change. Ladies and gentlemen, we are sorry for the disruption. Leonardo da Vinci said, out of all the sciences, art is the queen of communication. And now, more than ever in this day and age, communication of the truth and of the spirit of humanity during these times of catastrophic climate change is needed now. So what they did was, there were six of them. Gotta love that number, six of them, right? They uh, spray painted the words, no oil underneath the painting of the Last Supper. The Last Supper. You know what happens right before that Last Supper? Jesus is he's betrayed, right? And then he's brought to glory at the place of the skull, Golgotha. This is all playing out right now. This is all playing out. 
but the words no oil struck me, struck me. I shared on the show. I said, you know what oil's sy symbolic of? It's very important. When a king was about to be king, the prophet would come, and would anoint the king with oil. Why would he anoint it with oil? Why was that a big deal? A horn of oil. Why? Because oil in scripture is wisdom. The wisdom of God, a king needs to be anointed with the wisdom of God. Delana, uh, who sends me emails, actually sent me something about anointing with oil and talks about how sheeps, that they, uh, they, they, they put oil on the, uh, the flock of the sheep because of parasites and it helps. It's very interesting because the parasites can make them crazy, but the oil can protect against that. The wisdom of God can protect against the things that make us crazy today, the things that scare us today, things that hurt us today. The wisdom of God. Oil causes a man's face to shine. Moses, when he came down from the, uh, the mountain, the mountain of God, his face shined. He had to veil his face. He had so much understanding and so much revelation. He had to veil it. He had to do little goofy videos where he plays different parts and everything else. He couldn't really share the truth openly. He had to do it in a way that was tangible, that people could understand. That's why Jesus only, in Scripture, spoke in parable. Parable of the Ten Virgins. It's called a parable. There may have been literal ten. Maybe not. It's a parable. It doesn't matter. It's a story that we're supposed to understand the spiritual significance of it. There's no oil. Under the Last Supper, those words, no oil. Come on. That means there's no wisdom in the land. It's a wake-up call. It's like the Lord is saying, where's the wisdom? I wish there was a little sidebar that said, well, except for a Jacob's channel. <laughs> that would be cool. No oil, except for Jacob, <laughs> except for Jacob's ladder on YouTube. That would have been very cool. A group painted no oil, no new oil, under the painting copy, it's a copy, of Leonardo's The Last Supper. They glued their hands. Hand is very symbolic of a person's works, just so you know, in your mind. It's symbolic of your thoughts, your thoughts, and your works. That's why the mark of the beast goes on the head, right? You're, uh, you have the mark of the beast. You think beastly and you act beastly. That's how we know. 500-year-old copy of the masterpiece has been attributed to Da Vinci's student. The protesters targeted the painting on Tuesday. They called on their nation's government to immediately end all new oil and gas licenses. New oil, new truth, new revelation. Where is it? Where is it today? There are a lot of people that talk about God and Jesus and everything. And most of them are like condemning people and hating people and they're angry. And they take themselves way too seriously. They act like they are the end all be all. Not me, baby. I let God be the one who is, you should go to God, don't go to me. Except for come to the channel, you're thirsty, you wanna, you wanna drink, right? Come to Jacob's well. That's what, uh, that's what people do. They come by, get a drink. But if you leave here and you don't have Christ, you're going to thirst again. But Christ sits at the well. So come here, learn about Christ, and let Christ go with you. That's, that's what I say. No new oil. Okay, so parable of the ten virgins. This happens at the end. Just going to read this to you. And then at the end of the show, you'll be able you'll see these two little videos will pop up. Just grab the one video that says virgins and watch it so you can really get the, uh, the deep dive into this. At the time, at that time, and what time is this? This is the end times, okay? At that time, the kingdom of God will be like 10 virgins who took their lamps. By the way, the lamp, the, the word of God is a, a lamp to your feet, a light to your feet. So they took the word of God, okay? Some of them had oil. Some of them understood it. They understood what the word of God was. Some of them didn't have nothing. They had no idea. They didn't care even. They didn't even care. They're like, just tell me what it means. They didn't have any kind of experiential knowledge. And that's why they were left out in the end. Kingdom of Heaven is like 10 virgins who took their lamps, went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish. Five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps and did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oils in jar. Along with their lamps, the bridegroom was a long time in common. It's like, where are you, Lord? What's going on? What's going on? The wise ones, they got plenty of oil stored up. And they're like, you're taking a long time. 
where's this marriage supper? The Last Supper, no new oil. Do you see how these things come together? And do you see why I get excited? Because this, this is a miracle. It's as, as much a miracle as that horse veering off and letting the heavenly Trump win so that I could come on here and tell you, the Trump is sounded! The Trump is sounded! It's time! Absolutely opened up on them. Inside the furlong pole, he might lead it by double digits. Heavenly Trump is going to be second. Oh, and Morrow Flyboy ducked in, hit the rail, and unseated the rider. And Heavenly Trump is going to inherit the win here. It was a long time coming, and they'd all become drowsy, and they fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out. Now, ironically, my video from 2018 was was that it was the parable of the ten virgins at the eleventh hour, but this is midnight. We're at midnight now, right? We're in the last couple of years of this. Wherever the, the big shift is happening, this is midnight. This is the uh, this is the cry that's going out. Here's the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. All the virgins woke up. They trimmed their lamps. The foolish one said to the wise, "Give us some of that oil. Our lamps are going to go out." No, they reply, there may not be enough for both us and you. Instead, go and buy those who sell oil and get some for yourselves. Did you hear that? I don't sell what I share on YouTube. It's free. You don't got to come here to buy oil from me. It's free. Here's the thing, but you can't get the oil from me. So that's what happens. The wise, they already have their oil. But the foolish, the foolish, they think they got to go out and buy it. They didn't store up that treasure. You don't got to buy nothing. All you got to do is pray. All you got to do is love. All you got to do is be kind. And I'm going to prove that in a second. But while they were on their way to buy oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in to the banquet, and the doors were shut. Later, the others came on, saying, Lord, Lord, they said, open the door. But he replied, I don't know you. You're, you're, you're hateful. You're not compassionate. You're not kind. I don't know you. Therefore, this is a warning, Jesus says, keep watch. You never know when that day is coming. Then he goes on to describe it as like, you know, everybody was given money and what did you do with the money? Then he goes on to describe it another way. But really, ultimately, what it comes down to is this, the sheeps and the goats. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and by the way, glory means uh, a lot of people don't know what glory is. It's the glory of God to conceal a thing. It's the honor of kings and princes to seek out the matter. So when, when, when the son of man, that means the, uh, if you were to just take it literally, the child of man, that means that which is birthed within man and from mankind, be Christ, Christ in you, the hope of glory. When the son of man comes in his glory, that means the revelation of Christ in you, which is the hope of glory. You see, everybody gets this idea because religion made it all about the movies. It's like it's when he comes in the clouds and the lightning and the thunder. Not in when the Son of Man comes, that word erkame, to be revealed in his glory. It's the glory of God to, re to conceal a thing. The honor of us to, to have it revealed to us, to seek it out, to understand the truth. When the Son of Man comes is revealed in his glory, that thing that's been hidden. And all the angels that are with him, that means those that are messengers of the truth, that are with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. Where's the throne? We're the temple of God. We are the throne of God. Christ will sit on his throne. All the nations will be gathered before him because all the nations are his throne. Get it? Will be gathered before him and he will separate people one from another. Shepherds separating the sheep from the goat. He will put the sheep on the right, the goats on the left. Then the king will come and say to his right, Come with me, blessed by my father. Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you. Since the creation of the world, I was hungry. You gave me food. I was thirsty. You gave me drink. I was a stranger. You invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick. You looked after me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry? When did we see you thirsty? When did we see you without clothes? When did we see you in prison? And he said, whatever you did to everybody else, you did to me. That's what this is all about. 
when Christ comes to judge the living and the dead, it's going to be based on your work. So don't you think maybe now, maybe now that there's the warning, there's no new oil. Maybe now it's time for us to, you know, don't be caught unaware. Go out, be kind, be compassionate, be loving. And check out that video if you want. Click that video and enjoy it. And I love you. I'm grateful you're here. Thank you. Please do subscribe. Please do share. Please like. Please comment. And uh, get excited. Georgia Guidestones are blowing up. Whatever it means, things are happening. And I'm excited about it. Not excited about acts of violence. That's I'm not excited about that. I'm excited about the spiritual significance of it all. It's time for us to love people. It's time for us to repent. It's time to ask for the truth, no matter what the cost. I love you. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. September 10th. Mars hangs closer to the Earth than it has in 6,000 years. Like the light that led men from the East, to a child in a manger, it could well be a sign of good things to come. Thomas James shall be his name. The world will change because of him. In the small town of Bethel, in a time not unlike our own, a child with a great purpose is born. Years later, Alienated by his peers and abused, Thomas suffers a devastating loss. When it appears he has nothing left to live for in the world, this is when his true calling begins. While trying to escape the sinister powers that be, a terrifying vision haunts him. Miraculous events seem to follow the peculiar young man as he struggles to come to terms with what he was born to do. The stage is set. The time is at hand. The truth will rise and a revolution will begin. The startling revelation of who Thomas James is, truly, will change the lives of those around him and set off a chain of events long ago foretold. There is more to this novel than one might think. Inside these pages hides a treasure just waiting to be discovered. So if you've ever wondered if there's more to life, or why it is we suffer, then this story will not only captivate you, it may just open your eyes to a truth that could set you free. Find out what is in us all that makes us heed the calling. Click it.